previously on Five Points of Articulation. Boy, oh boy, do I like this. If his mouth was closed, this would be my favorite Batman head sculpt. And honestly, this is probably how I would display it. So, something a bit more like this? Stick around, it's my very first customizing video. If you saw my review of the DC Multiverse Hush 2-pack, you'd know that I was a bit disappointed. Especially with Batman. For one thing, it had the slack jaw open mouth, no treads on the boots despite the fact that they feature very heavily in the Hush comic, and most egregiously, the elbows. Some of you in the comments have told me that later batches have corrected the elbows, which is great for the people that buy those, but it also doesn't solve the mouth and shoe problem. That said, I think I can. One fun thing I did in between the head swap shots was switch around the underoos. You'll notice that the yellows match up perfectly. That got me wondering, what other part swaps can I do? And could part swaps help me to fix this? When doing the part swaps, one thing that really surprised me were the shorts. Although they do look the same, each pair has been re-sculpted to accommodate its respective belt. That means you can't swap the belts. If you want to change the shorts, you have to do it with a paintbrush. In my previous video, I noted how similar the grays are between these two figures. I first wondered if I could use the elbow joint on this one and just take the blue off. That really wouldn't solve the problem of a glove, though. Now, I could, of course, just paint it, but I wanted something nicer than a simple painted-on glove. Something more like this. So then I thought, well... Why not just do this? And then that got me thinking about the boots. This figure doesn't have treads, but you know who does? Three Jokers. Now we were getting somewhere. One question you might be asking is why not just switch the feet? Or just the whole boot for that matter? After all, the legs do match. In theory, I should be able to boil this and pull it off, and then just glue it into this leg, but I actually have something a little bit different in mind for these. Extra details assigned, and these look just fine to me. And again, you get the added bonus of the treads. The only remaining problem is the miss match gray of the torso. By this point, I'd gotten myself a new Three Jokers Batman to cannibalize for parts anyway, so in for a penny, in for a pound. I knew that there was no way of doing this without at least a little bit of painting. I especially wanted to avoid painting any joints that might chip off later. The diaphragm, for example, could be a big problem. And that's when it hit me. Why not take the diaphragm off of Three Jokers and put it here? Then, the only thing I'd have to paint would be the gray of the top piece. First things first, we soak the torsos in some boiling water. What I do is heat up a mug of water for about two minutes. Since it's a Batman video, I gotta use my Batman mug. After soaking for about a minute, it was nice and soft, but there was one unexpected problem. Because there wasn't anything to grip onto, I couldn't really get a good hold of it. Prying it off with a butter knife ended up being the way to go. I could just put these together and keep going, but I think it might be a good time to paint. To choose the right paint, I actually brought part of the figure with me so I could match the color in the store. I ended up selecting the satin finish dark granite from Apple Barrel. It was a Walmart for about a buck fifty. At this point, I should probably point out that conventional wisdom says to use a paint like Testers or Citadel, but for one thing, this matches perfectly, and remember, there's no real joints in this part, so I'm not worried about chipping. One thing that's not negotiable, however, is when you paint, don't do a thick glob. Instead, build up multiple thin layers. While that's drying, is a nice opportunity to talk about the gloves. The Batman Hush figure comes with open hands so he can hold his batarangs, so I've decided to switch these out. Luckily, they pop off and can be switched with no trouble. Granted, the texture doesn't match exactly, but since the scallops don't have it, it kind of pulls it together. Who knows, maybe this part's a separate gauntlet piece. Either way, just sitting on your shelf and you'll probably never notice. This does, however, bring us to one other issue. The scallops. The scallops on the Hush Glove are shorter and flatter, and these ones are a lot longer. So then, do I accept that they're inaccurate, or do I do something about it? I know it's a huge risk, but I've decided to try these wire cutters to trim them down. Why no? I'm not nervous at all. Okay. Here we go. Alright. You'll need a little touch up with black, but that's actually pretty cool. Not too dissimilar. And now the other side. Okay, I can live with this. Little touch of black and you'd never know. First coat is done and dried. Obviously a bit streaky and we'll need another coat. But so far, I am really impressed. As you can see, this paint is a winner. Now we move on to the second coat, remembering to keep it nice and thin. 
Before we continue, if you like this video, do me a favor and give it a like. This video is a new format for me, and unfortunately, YouTube doesn't always like it when you try something new. Your likes would really help out. Having let that second coat dry, and I think that that'll just about do it. For real, this looks darn near perfect. And as you can see, by doing two thin coats, it's nice and smooth and doesn't have any paint lines. I also decided to touch up the bat symbol. This time for the heating process, we really only have to worry about this part. To make it a bit less messy, this time I'm going to use the hair dryer. And there we go. If I didn't know that that top piece was painted, I would have never guessed. Seriously, get yourself some of this. Only one thing left to worry about. The head. In my review, I said that if the mouth was closed, it would probably be my favorite Batman head sculpt ever. Naturally, I couldn't close the mouth completely, but I could do this. Now, he's angrily gritting his teeth, and I absolutely love it. This was an experiment that I did off camera, so I can't show it to you, but I can talk you through the process. The first thing I'd need to do is make the head nice and soft. I used a hair dryer for this because it was very important that the head not be wet. After I got the head as soft and gummy as possible, I pulled the jaw down and then put a single drop of super glue in the back. Then, I squeezed it shut. A little bit of excess glue did ooze out, but I carefully wiped it away with a toothpick. Then, I held it like this until the plastic cooled and the glue dried. For me, that took about 15 minutes, and I couldn't be happier with the result. I know I should probably repaint the face, but for now I'm pretty happy. Even at a profile, it looks completely natural. This went from being a sculpt that I absolutely hated, to a Batman that I absolutely love. Now, we put it all together. First things first, and we slide on the shorts. There's actually a groove in there to help guide you. Then we do leg number one, leg number two. Don't forget the rotator cuffs from Three Jokers. Arm number one, arm number two, and done. Honestly, I could not be happier with how this turned out. Seeing him side by side with how he started, and hopefully you feel the same way. Speaking of side by sides, and here he is with the Three Jokers Batman, and here he is with Rebirth. For just a few Bat Family comparisons, here he is with my DC Essentials Nightwing and Red Hood, and here he is with my Mattel Tim Drake. For just one Justice League comparison, here he is with Superman. Batman is still just a little bit too tall. Here he is with Hush. And here he is with my Kit Bash Joker. For a relative scale comparison, here he is with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And of course, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. So then, let's talk about price and everything that you'll need. First things first, you're going to need the Hush 2-pack. That'll set you back about $40. Secondly, you're going to need the Three Jokers Batman. Retail that will go for $20, but I have seen it on sale for closer to $15. Thirdly, you're going to need this apple barrel paint. That cost me about a buck fifty. Throw in some brushes and crazy glue, and this project's gonna cost you in the ballpark of $65. Obviously, it would have been better if McFarlane did it this way to start with, but you know what? Sometimes, playing with your toys means making them your own. As for what I'm gonna do with all these spare parts, that's a custom for another day. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, like this video and let me know in the comments. This was an experiment for me, so if you want to see more, definitely let me know. Otherwise, check out a couple of these head swaps. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.